2020 was great. Okay, that's a lie. But for films, 2020 was actually really great. I think because loads of films were pushed back, people would assume that it kind of sucked, but it really didn't. There's been loads of great films. And that's why this year, instead of doing a top 10, I'm gonna do a top 20, woo! Yes, I am aware I look a bit like a sports commentator talking into this. I've tried it by having a mic stand here and it just looks ridiculous. So let me live on my dream of being a sports commentator. I'm awful at sports and now they're filmed so I feel like I'm good at them. It's worth pointing out that I go by UK release date, which means that some of the films on IMDb, which say 2019, actually came out in January for us here. And despite that that's kind of when the films that I like come out, 15 of the 20 came out after the COVID pandemic began in the March lockdown. So there's always great films out there and sometimes you just have to seek them out. So here's a way to recommend some films. Also, I'm gonna be quiet brief on these films because I'm going for 20 and I don't want this to last forever. So, I'm sorry if I don't give away that much detail, but check them out. I recommend them all. Number 20. Bad Education is a film about a school board embezzlement and the lengths they'd go to to try and cover that up. This film's almost carried by Hugh Jackman's performance, which is awesome. And not to undermine the rest of the cast, because they're all great, but there's such complexities about his character where if he wasn't as charming as Hugh Jackman is, and let's be real, Hugh Jackman, pretty darn charming. It just wouldn't work and they wouldn't be able to get away with towing the line between good and bad in a way that is really interesting and works as well as it does. This is really entertaining and while it takes a lot from other crime films it definitely stands on its own and has its own characteristics that makes it worth watching. Yeah I really love this, it's currently on Sky Cinema and available on quite a lot of digital to buy platforms so check this one out. Number 19. Saint Maud's another film carried by an amazing central performance. Sorry about my probably awful pronunciation, but Olive Clark transforms herself into Maud in a film about tragedy and how we can hold on to hope in ways that are scary through different things like religion. And yeah, I don't want to give too much away about this one. There's some really crazy stuff in here, and if you go into it expecting a jump fest, then you will be disappointed. This is more of a creepy character study, and I loved it, and it's insane and haunting final frame. This is currently on DVD, Blu-ray, and you can buy it on most digital services, so yeah, check it out. Number 18. Les Miserables, and no, it's not that one. This is a French crime drama film about an anti-crime unit who discover that an arrest which has gone kind of wrong has been filmed, and their desperate attempts to try and get the footage to cover it up. This film's pretty intense, and I mean that as a compliment. Time just flies by as you go away on this kind of crazy story, and you kind of just get lost in it. And yeah, I don't really want to spoil this one either. Just watch it. It's quite crazy, and it's well shot and acted, and it's quite dramatic, and I'd recommend it. It's currently on Netflix, and most people have Netflix, so yeah, watch it. Number 17. Saint Francis is both hilarious and moving. It's a film about a 37 year old who's kind of just like passing her way through life, and then what happens after she has an abortion and takes on the role of a nanny for a quite full on six year old kid. This film's really funny. It's also really sweet and heartwarming. I like films that are just full of character and love for the characters within it. And this is definitely one of them. It's on Netflix. It's really sweet. Please watch it. Number 16. Proxima is the story of an astronaut training for a mission and what it means to leave everything behind. Don't really go into this one expecting like a space action movie. This is more of a character study and how the characters are with each other, mostly around Eva Green's character and her relationship with her daughter. The direction's great and the characters are really well fleshed out, which is really cool because then you kind of just go along with them for the journey. Eva Green's fantastic and yeah, I just liked going along for the ride with her story and discovering her relationships with everyone and how it all plays out. I took a lot from this and if you like character studies then it's on Netflix so check it out. Number 15. Mangrove's the first film on a collection on BBC iPlayer called Small Axe which is five separate films by Steve McQueen about black life in the 60s in Britain. Mangrove's kind of a film of two halves. The first half's about the Mangrove restaurant and its importance in the Notting Hill community. The second half's more of like a trial in court. I don't really want to go into more detail than that because I just knew it was about a restaurant going into it and they blend together really well where it's really satisfying to see. It's really great. Steve McQueen's a master of his art at the minute and it's great that we got five Steve McQueen films this year. There's some really lovely moments where you're watching people in the 
the mangrove and you kind of just get how important it was to the people at the time. The court case is really thrilling and yeah, it's a director at the top of his craft. It's on BBC iPlayer, so please watch it. Number 14. Never Rarely Sometimes Always is the story of a 17 year old girl and the absolute crazy length she has to go to just to get an abortion. This film's kind of terrifying in a way. It's full of heart and you really feel like you're going along with the two central characters as they go off on their trip. It's really terrifying and it really shows why men should not be in charge of women's bodies and women's issues. There's real beauty here and I think it's the main girl's first film and she's outstanding. It's a great film and it's currently on Sky Cinema. I think you can rent it from certain places. Be warned it is quite heavy but it's so worth the ride. Number 13. The Climb is a film about a friendship over a few years and kind of explains the theory. What if your best friend was a total piece of shit? This film's full of really impressive long takes and it really pays off. The coordination that must have gone into them is mind blowing and you really feel because of it like you're there with them. It's really funny, well paced and I didn't know where the story was going. It was fantastic. It's kind of hard to find but please keep it on your radar. It's called The Climb look for it number 12 red white and blue is the second film in this list in the small axe series by steve mcqueen this is about leroy logan played fantastically by john boyega who is a black man who wants to join the police force and what that means for his relationship with his family within the community and from the actual police force themselves steve mcqueen's a master john boyega's great and he really gives one of his best performances i've ever seen in this film it deals with the complexities and the relationships with such nuance and such humanity where you believe every minute it'd be really easy to make this film really cartoony and over the top but steve mcqueen knows how to hit the level just right and it's on iplayer please just watch it number 11 the wolf of snow hollow is the second film by writer director performer jim cummins who also did thunder road and it was one of my favorite films of the year it came out and it's on netflix and this film's further proof that James Cummins is a force to be reckoned with. This is a comedy horror about a town that descends into panic after it starts to discover bodies after every full moon. Jim Cummins' performance in this film would be noteworthy regardless, but the fact he wrote and directed this as well just makes it even more impressive. It's hilarious, it's dramatic, it's well paced, and it's available on most digital platforms, so please rent it and give Jim Cummins your money so he can make more films. Number 10. The Lighthouse is the second film from director Robert Eggers and this film is about two lighthouse keepers and what happens when they get trapped on an island in the 1890s. This film looks beautiful. The black and white 35mm mixed with the fact that they used old cameras and lenses really adds to the authenticity of this film and the fact it's in an almost square aspect ratio really adds to the claustrophobia. Robert Pattinson and Willem Dafoe are great and they give it a hundred percent and fully embrace the chaos that this film goes into. It's quite strange to so check it out if you're into some freaky shit. It's currently on DVD, Blu-ray and on most digital platforms. Number 9. Education is the last film in the Small Axe series and it's a coming of age story about Kingsley, a boy who's obsessed with space and NASA and what happens when he goes to a school for special children, shall we say. This film's kind of heartbreaking. The lead performance from the kid's great and you really feel his frustration of how his passion's uncatered for and how the school doesn't support him and just how fucked up the education system can be. I mean, not that it's perfect, but still how bad it was at the time. It's a real heart-filled film. It's beautifully shot and it's just full of humanity and it's on iPlayer. Watch it! Number eight. Rocks is another coming of age story. This one's about a teenage girl trying to look after a younger brother after their mum mysteriously abandons them. This film almost feels like a documentary. Everything in it feels really authentic. All the kids are great and considering for the most part, it's like their first films. It's really impressive. They all act and talk how kids would. All of the social media usage in the film is really accurate and it's just very clear that the director did her research to make sure that everything's authentic. This is a stressful but really empathetic film and it's really worth checking out it's on netflix and i urge you to watch it because it's really sweet and great number seven tenet is an action film and it's a pretty great one i think one of the keys to enjoying tenet is knowing your expectations with it 
I think it exists just to show really cool set pieces and it never tries to do more and I feel like that's what makes it work so well because the action scenes in this are fantastic. The coordination is great and I really like the mysteries that are going on with the inversion and how time works in here. It's a great action mystery and if you go in expecting that and knowing that's what it's trying to be, it's not trying to be any more, then I think you can have a great time because it is a really fun experience. But do make sure you watch it with subtitles. Number six. Feels Good Man is genuinely a documentary about the Pepe the Frog meme and how it got hijacked by the alt-right and what that kind of means for the creator of Pepe the Frog. It's a documentary about a meme. I'm aware how bizarre that sounds and on paper that really shouldn't work, but somehow it works and it works so well. The actual filmmaking of a documentary is really great, it's really well paced, it comes together well and there's these really cool animated sections that they use to kind of tell the story sometimes. It's a really interesting film and they clearly did a lot of research going into it and I think it's great. I feel this film works really well for everyone regardless of how much you know about memes. It's currently on BBC iPlayer so please check it out. Number 5 Soul is the latest Pixar film and it is beautiful. It's a film about the joy of humanity and what it means to be human and the meaning of life. You know, kids film. Like the greatest Pixar films, it takes these really deep and intricate theories and tackles them in a way that's so universal. The voice acting's great, the film just looks outstanding, but I think everyone kind of expects that from Pixar at this point. It's full of heart, it's really emotional, and it's also really funny. It's up there as some of Pixar's best work, so check it out, it's on Disney Plus right now. Number four. Waves is a film I almost don't want to say anything about. It's beautiful. It's intense when it needs to be, it knows when to take its time, and the soundtrack absolutely slaps. It's really sad at points, it's really beautiful at points. It's a film about tragedy and hope and so much. It's currently on Now TV and Sky Cinema apparently, and you can definitely rent it from some online platforms, so please watch it. Number three. Uncut Gems is one of the most stressful experiences I've had watching a film and it's fucking awesome. Seeing this in a sold out screening was one of my favorite things ever. Hearing the crowd audibly gasp along with the film was great. This is a film about a gambling obsessed store owner in the New York Diamond District played amazingly by Adam Sandler. And I mean like amazing. He's great, it's probably his best performance, if not for Punch Drunk Love, and the film's so intense. The sound mix is like, oh, hey, where's my money, where's my money, where's my money, money too, man? It's a crazy, stressful ride. I can't get enough of it, it's great. It's on Netflix, check it out, but be prepared. It's quite stressful. Number two. Portrait of a Lady on Fire is the most beautiful film of the year. It's a film about the female gaze and women's position in art and art in general and women in general. And I know I've used this word so much over the course of this video, but there's not a more perfect word to describe it than beautiful. And I mean literally beautiful. You could take almost any frame of this film and it would look like a beautiful piece of art. And that's really great considering the stories about portraits. It really adds something. The way the film shows love and the way the film shows human interaction. Everything about this is beautiful. It's emotional. I don't want to talk about it. Just watch the film, please. It's currently on Mubi and I mean, this film's basically perfect, so please watch it. Number one. I mean, what else is there even left to say about Parasite other than believe the hype? It's a masterpiece! The film's a straight up masterpiece. It's perfect. Bong Joon-ho knows exactly what he's doing. He knows how to make it tense when it needs to be. He knows how to make it funny when it needs to be. And he knows how to mix them so perfectly. I think this film's best experience knowing basically nothing about it other than it's great. I saw it four times at the cinema and I have no shame. It's on Prime, watch it. I think out of the two versions that are on there, I prefer the colour version, but the black and white version is still quite cool, but watch it, it's a masterpiece. 10 out of 10, I love everything about it, it's great, please watch it. So yeah, 2020 was pretty sucky, but at least there were some great films. Thank you all for watching this, it's really kind, and if you watched up to this point, then yay, you've unlocked the secret video. 
what is the secret video? Well, it's just an unlisted video I did where I very briefly, don't worry, talk through all of the rest of the 2020 films I saw. It's kind of messy, unedited. Uh, it's linked down below. Like I said, it's unlisted, so the link's there. Check it out if you're interested in that sort of thing. And yeah, thank you. Stay masked. Stay cool if you're cool. If you're not cool, be nice and you'll be cool. If you've seen any of the films or watched any of them because of my recommendation, please let me know what you think. And peace out.